because, um, yes, I'm going to give you another math video. Imagine that. I love math. I've always loved math. And I hope that you're really getting into this. Well, I hope so. We're already at chapter 10. <laughs> I mean, this is almost, we're like at the end of fifth grade. My goodness, how time flies. And we're doing lesson 10.1. There's only one more chapter after this one. And we're looking at measurement and data. Cool. And our topic today is customary length. Customary. Kind of we think of the English units and what we use. Essential question. Yeah. How can you compare and convert customary units of length? Okay. I don't know who that was, but okay, you told us what the essential question was, which is basically the purpose, our learning target as we work into this lesson. But as always, right? This is impossible unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now it says here to build a new swing, Mr. Matson needs nine feet of rope for each side of the swing and six more feet for the monkey bar. The hardware store sells rope by the yard. Oh, this must have to do with this picture here. Let's take a look. Oh, look at this girl. She's having a ball on her swing. It must be that. Oh, that looks like a lot of fun. You know what, though? I think I'd be facing the other way and jump into that nice little river. <laughs> okay, but you know, it sure would be a lot of fun. Well, let's get back to the problem. So how many feet of rope does Mr. Matson need for the swing? So again, I can't stress enough. I say this many times. It's always about revisiting the problem. I sometimes think of it unpacking it in pieces because here in our problem, when we look back, it says to build a new swing that he needs nine feet of rope, but it says for each side of the swing. Okay. And then he needs six more feet for the monkey bar. So we're just focusing on rope is one thing that we need to look at. And it just so happens that the hardware store sells the rope by the yard. I can see that's a problem because, you know, Mr. Matson knows what he needs for feet. That's a unit of measure, but he doesn't have it in yards. So how many feet of rope does Mr. Matson need for the swing? Well, on each side, I would say nine plus nine plus six, but here it doesn't look like they're including the monkey bar just for the swing. Okay. So I'm going to say nine feet on the one side and I'm going to abbreviate feet and then plus another nine feet course is going to equal 18 feet. I'll spell that out. Okay. Whoops. Forgot my little dot. Okay. And now it says how many feet does Mr. Matson need for the swing and the monkey bar combined? And in that case, now we have 18. This is what I was talking about. Plus the six feet that he will need for the monkey bar. If we add that together, yes, we get 24 feet. Uh oh, I'm going to go in the picture. Ah, okay. Now, it says Mr. Madsen needs to find how many yards of rope he needs to buy. He will need to convert 24 feet to yards. How many groups of three feet are in 24 feet? It's important to know that one yard is equal to three feet. Okay, so can I write this down somewhere? Yeah, let's go way up here at the top, cameraman. Thank you. So we're going to write one yard right up here is equal to three feet. And I know many of you already knew that, and you were like, Mr. Wara, I already know that. And I'm going to say, good for you, because you're a fifth grader. You rock, my friend. Now, how many groups of three feet are in 24 feet, then? Well, we have a little diagram down here below. Let's take a look. Okie dokie. There we go. So, yeah, it says one 12-inch ruler is one foot, okay? And I can see how they're lining them up for us. So if that's 12-inch ruler, and that's in inches, and that's one foot, that would be another foot and the third foot. And it says a yardstick is equal to one yard. So that's three feet. So, yeah, that's, I think, kind of straightforward because we were looking at groups of three feet. But we haven't finished this question yet. That's where we're going. Okay, got it. How many groups of three feet are in 24 feet? I know some of you already know the answer. Okay, just keep it to yourself right now. So here's three groups of three I see in between. Got it. And that dot, 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 I guess that means there's a lot of three feet in there. How many would I need? Uh, well, we know that there's 24 feet. So really what I want to do is I want to take feet. Ah, here... Okay, here it is over here. So record. So I'm trying to follow. <laughs> if I look a little lost, it's because I'm trying to make sure that I teach this in the way that Go Math would like for you to learn it. So here I have the total feet divided by the feet in one yard, which is three. And we learned that 
up above. So that's going to equal eight total yards. So our model here, I guess, if there's a little blue square here, we put an answer is going to be eight. We're going to need eight of these three feet, getting us to 24 feet. Okay, so Mr. Matson needs to buy eight yards of rope. What we did, so let me kind of put this in my own words and in my own thinking. So what I was understanding was that, that Mr. Madsen needs 24 feet of rope. We know that the hardware store only sells it in yards. We know that there's one yard is equal to three feet. So indeed what we're doing is we're taking a smaller unit because feet is smaller than yards. I know that a lot of you probably know that. Okay, so because we're going from a smaller unit like feet into yards, which is a larger unit, what we need to do is divide. And in this case, that's why we divided down here because we took the total feet, we divided it by three because why three? Because there was three feet and one yard and we want to change our unit to yards. And there you go right there. Okay, what's this here with mathematical practices? What operation did you use when you found groups of three feet and 24 feet? Do you multiply or divide when you convert a smaller unit to a larger unit? Isn't that coincidental? That's what we just did. And we learned that when you convert a smaller unit to a larger unit, we divide. Okay, I'm just going to put that one word there. So we divide. All right, key thing there. All right, let's move on to the next page. Page master. Okay, now we come to the example one. This is where it looks like we're working a little bit more independently. Let's see. It says use the table to find the relationship between miles and feet. Okay, let's do that. All right, I have customary units of length. Good, good, good. Uh, one foot. Okay, is equal to 12 inches. Okay, I'm aware of that. Believe it or not, my foot is actually, tw I wear a size 12. So you can just imagine. Yeah, I've learned that 12 inches is equal to one foot. And it says that, whoa, one yard. One yard is equal to three feet. Okay, we learned that already. Oh, look at this mile. One mile is equal to 5,280 feet. Okay, good. One mile is also equal to 1,760 yards. Okay, some very strange numbers. Not quite like when we were working with all that power of 10 stuff. These numbers are very exact. Okay, so this problem states the distance between the new high school and the football field is two miles. How does this distance compare to 10,000 feet? Hmm, okay. Now, it says when you convert larger units to smaller units, you need to multiply. Okay, I need to say that again. That's really important. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. When you convert, and convert just means to change, from larger units to smaller units, you need to multiply, okay? So in the last problem, we had feet and yards. So if we wanted to change yards to feet, because yards is a larger unit, yards is a bigger unit, we'd have to multiply in order to change that into the smaller unit of feet. So look at what they have here. Step one says, convert two miles to feet. All right, think. One mile is equal to 5,280 feet. Okay, I'm glad they're reminding us of the table. So it, need, it basically means that, so I'm going to need to multiply then. Multiply the total number of miles by, that's right, 5,280 feet. Because that's how many feet are in one mile. Now we come over here. Total miles is two. Two times, that's right, we're going to multiply that by, that's 5,280 feet. And that's going to equal, well, I'm going to have to do a little bit of math here myself. Five and five, well, that's 10,000. That's not going to go over 280 and 286. Carry the one four, that looks like 560. Okay, sorry, I just kind of did that in my head. You could go ahead and do that on paper. And then it says, so two miles is equal to, yeah, 10,000. 560 feet. Now step two does say compare. Write less than, greater than, or equal to. Well, now we know with that answer. How did it compare to 10,000 feet? Well, we had 10,560 feet. Yeah, we know that that's going to be greater than the 10,000 feet. So since, since blank is, okay, so since 10,000 560 feet is greater than, I guess the word greater goes in here would make sense. Greater than 10,000. The distance between the new high school and the football field is, well, yeah, it would be farther, longer, longer, farther, longer than 10,000 feet. Probably longer would be better. Anyways, 
Example two, convert to mixed measures. OK, we can do that. Mixed measures use more than one unit of measure. All right, so you can convert a single unit of measurement to mixed measures. That might be kind of confusing. Mixed measures just means like where you have a measurement where it's feet and maybe you have inches as well. OK, or maybe you have miles, right? And then maybe you also have yards and they're giving you that mixed. OK, that's what that means. So convert 62 inches into feet and inches. All right, step one says use the table. Well, we don't need to use the table because they have right down here. Think. 12 inches is equal to one foot. The same size as Mr. War's foot. Uh, okay, executive producer, okay, come on. You're talking about the size of my foot here. Okay, it says, I am changing from a smaller unit to a larger unit, so I... That's right. I divide. Don't be fooled. Okay, some of you might have thought, well, we just multiplied. Why are we dividing? Because we're going from a smaller to a larger, not a larger to a smaller. I know this is something we have to memorize. It's going to be something that can be helpful. Makes it easy for you. So 62 divided by the number of inches in one foot is 12. And 62 divided by 12, well, that's not going to give us an exact number. So since I know that there's 12 inches in every foot, if I were to take that times 5, I could see that that's 60. Because I know that 12 times 5 is 60. Because there's little 5 minute intervals on the clock. Just think about it. 5 minute, 5 minute, you have 12 numbers on the clock. And there's 60 minutes in one hour. That's a nice easy little basic fact. So that's going to equal then 5 feet. But look, that's only 60. I need two more. And that's not like going to be like my remainder. Remainder, 2 inches. So 5 feet, 2 inches. Cool. 5 feet. Two inches. Is there anything more here? Let's see. Oh, yes, there is. So it says uh, mathematical. Blah, 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 blah. No, you're Okay, let's look at mathematical practice six. Okay, mathematical practice six says attend to precision. Yes, it says I can use precision when solving problems and communicating my ideas. What does that really mean when we think about that? It's problem solving, which is I can calculate accurately. I can calculate efficiently. And of course, my answer matches what the problem asked me to do. Okay, if I had to estimate or if I had to find an exact answer. And communicating, very important. I can speak, read, write, and listen mathematically. Oh, I love it. I can correctly use math symbols, vocabulary, and units of measure. What do you know? That's what we're doing here. So very important that when we do math that we attend to precision. Time for you to go, luego. Goodbye. See you later. Okay. So we said goodbye to mathematical practice six. Now it says explain how to convert the mixed measures 12 yards, two feet, to a single unit of measurement in feet. And how many feet is it? Ooh, I like that question. Okay, well, it does explain how to do it. So I think what I would do, hmm, since I am trying to put a, and this is part of the larger unit here, into one single unit of measurement in feet, in essence, then I am going from a larger unit to a smaller unit. And if I'm going from larger to smaller, right, I'm going to need to multiply. So the first thing I would do, just me personally, I would take the 12 yards because I know there's three feet in one yard. I would just take the 12. I think I just multiply it by three first. So now I know that I have 36 feet here. See, and then I just have two more feet. So I'm just taking 36 plus two and I'm going to get 38 feet. I don't know, that's not my final answer yet because I want to review my work. Okay? Uh, da -dun, da -dun, dun -dun. Uh, wheels in the bus go round and round, round. Okay, sorry. Okay, uh, so no, I feel good about that. I think I need to multiply 12 yards by 3 feet. That gave me my 36 feet. And then I'm just adding the 2 feet, 38 feet. Yeah, my final answer. Let me go ahead and write that down for you. <laughs> Yes, I like that. Huh? What? Mr. Wara, I goofed. I accidentally put music in the background while you were doing your problem. Oh, no. Pfft. My executive producer. Woo! Always trying. What are you, trying some new tricks? I just hit the wrong button. Okay. All right. Hey, no worries. Okay, you know, it's just tough to get a good producer these days. Hey, uh, you know what? But I do start, I am hearing some music in the background right now. That means that we're getting close to the end. But you know what? Uh, you know what? Can you just cut? Can you cut that? Yeah, just cut the music.
Cut it. All right, thank you. Now, hold on to that, okay? Because there's something that I wanted to review with these guys. Okay, and that is basically remember what we learned, okay? If you go from a larger unit, right, to a smaller, let me do it this way. I was going to do the arrow the other way, but a larger unit to a smaller unit, if that's what we're doing, what do we do? We multiply. Multiply. Okay, and then if the opposite is true, so if we're going from a smaller to a larger, there we go. So smaller to a larger, we divide. Okay, this really almost deserves a bubble, 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 bubble. There you go, to separate. Important. Okay, yes. Okay, I hear the music in the background. My friends, I can't stress. I love doing these math videos with you, and I'm so glad that you are participating and watching these. And I hope you're learning a lot, my friends. Now, live long and prosper.